Oh boy, oh boy, the avalanches. For those who know, you know. For those who don't, go check out their debut LP, Since I Left You, have your mind blown, read up about the album, have your mind blown even more, and if you're a total nerd like me, then check out Moonwalker, who did a great job at identifying some of the thousands of samples used by the group, or go to whosample.com and check out their tracks and see what samples they used. Hello and welcome to Vinyl Worthy Albums. I'm Luke, I'm a picky vinyl buyer and a deep diver of music. What we do here is go through albums that I can enjoy from start to finish without feeling the need to skip any tracks. And if an album can do that, then there's a good chance it will be considered vinyl worthy. When an artist has a vinyl worthy album, I then listen to their whole discography to see how I feel about it. This is my own journey of music discovery, and as you join me, I hope you discover some music you too can enjoy. The reason I make this series is because I'm simply looking to talk about music. I hope you can join in, give me your thoughts, share your own vinyl worthy albums, and I may get the chance to check them out. I first discovered the Avalanches in 2015 thanks to Spotify Weekly Discovery. It was around this point in time that I was discovering so much new music that I loved. I remember their song Since I Left You being at the top of my very first Spotify weekly discovery playlist. It was Love at First Listen, and it wasn't long before I listened through the full album of the same name and found one of my favourite albums of all time. So say what you will about Spotify and their business, but man, that algorithm is pretty damn good. Without going too deep into the history of the Avalanches, they formed in the late 90s under various different names until they settled on the Avalanches, And then they eventually got out their debut LP, Since I Left You, which was made up of apparently thousands of different samples, many of which cannot even be identified today. And the impact that it left was huge. There's also a few videos on YouTube where you can actually watch the guys go through the process of taking their samples for the album. And it is definitely well worth a watch. One of the things that I like about the video documentary is that you can see how it is due to the technology advances that they were able to take these samples in such a way and that it was easily accessible for them with the power of computer technology. Despite the late 90s not being the first use of such digital technology for the purpose of sampling, the results the avalanches get from their efforts on Since I Left You is absolutely a landmark in its history of the technique and is considered to be one of the most inspiring and influential. But that's all good and everything, let's see how it lines up track by track. Yeah, it's absolutely vinyl worthy. At just over an hour, this album takes you on one hell of an adventure. There's so much to be said for the feel that you get off of this album, and there's something intrinsic about using samples for the purpose of nostalgia. And we all know that at this point now, that nostalgia is a very powerful tool to use in your arsenal. There's also something to be said about the content of the lyrics in this track. With Since I Left You, it is reflecting on the past in both the themes of the lyrics and in the old time recordings where they are clearly aged and you can even hear the final pops and clicks in the recordings as well, which they were sampled from. The use of transitioning and blending the ends and starts of each track in the album, it works a treat as well with making it feel like one cohesive adventure. For those who've tripped on psychedelics as well, there is also some similarities in the feeling of the experience of this album to tripping, as the experience while you're tripping weaves in and out as you transition from just your environments and then just different thoughts, you know, they float from one to the other. And this is very much how this album feels as well. On track two, Stay Another Season, we get one of my favourite samples usage of all time with Madonna's Holiday. I adore the bass line and riff on Holiday and I think its usage here, which also pops up a little bit later in the album as well, is perfect. It gets straight to business with being very playful and lets you know that you're going to be in for a real good time on this album. As we get to track 3 Radio, I would describe this track as being hypnotic in a good way. Track 4, Two Hearts in 3-4 Time, it feels so right being there, and I breeze over to Avalanche Rock, which I combine with Flight Tonight really, which is close to being a pillar, but when I compare them up to the next few tracks, which are absolutely no doubt pillars, then I think that they do take the edge, which are close to you, 
with its incredible use of the sample stool pigeon from Kid Creole and the Coconuts. More to hear from them coming soon. And Diners Only is a continuation of Close to You. A different feeling and electricity are also brilliant. We do hit a little lull at track 11 and 12 as these are weaker and I would even say that Pablo's Cruise, if any minute of this album could be cut, it probably would be that track. And I may surprise a few, but Frontier Psychiatrist is obviously great. It's just not a favourite of mine personally on this album. Track 14, Eto. With the tracks Eto and Summer Crane, they get you back onto the rails of the breezy adventure of the album. With Little Journey, I love it. It's the transition from the breezy adventure of the last two tracks, and it preps you ready for the next track, which is an absolute banger. It's Live at Domino's. It's like the last hurrah. One of my favourite samples is included at this point. It's the Excusez-moi Way from Club Med. Excusez-moi Way! Another one of my favourite samples here, which is Ma Baker by Boney M. And another favourite sample of mine is Flight 2-2 is off to Honolulu, which is actually still a mystery. And we end with Extra Kings. It's a great sleepy track to end on, and it harkens back to the theme of leaving. It really culminates all of the experience together and brings it full circle, and it makes it feel so cohesively done. It's just a fantastic hour well spent, if you've got that time. To sum up since I left you. It's a masterpiece that deserves all of the reverence that it gets. I'm not aware of many albums quite like it, so feel free to recommend them in the comments. So what happened after the masterpiece debut? Was it a dreaded follow-up? Well, it took 16 years, and what we got was Wildflower. And no, it's not a dreadful follow-up actually. It was actually really decent. The playfulness of the samples are there, and also, we now have many guest contributors throughout. To sum up this LP, it's using the same techniques that we're used to by now. It also has a feel inspired by The Wizard of Oz, and it works well for me. As for the guest contributors, I think they help the album too. However, many of the tracks don't stand out to me like they do on Since I Left You, as my ratings suggest. So the highlights of this album, I would say, are Because I'm Me, it's a fantastic opener that definitely gets you pumped to hear the rest of the album, and it absolutely marks their return. Track 3, Frankie Sinatra. This is a pillar for me, I, I really enjoy this track. I love the bombasticity of it, and it's theatrical, but in a very fun and pantomime kind of way. Track 6 is also a clear pillar for me. It's featuring Chaz Bundick of Toro Amoy, who I have to admit, everything that I've heard of him, I have really enjoyed and I really do need to check out more of his stuff very soon. When I first heard The Noisy Eater, I couldn't get past the idea of, <laughs> you know, how having to hear someone like, you know, pretend that they're like eating something. But eventually I kind of grew, it grew on me, I have to admit. And it is close to being a pillar for me. However, I understand if many people will tap out of this one and be like, absolutely no way I'm listening to this. So as you can see, I'm breezing past quite a lot of the tracks on this album, and that's because they don't really capture me in the same way as most of Since I Left You did. There's a few keepers like Harmony as well. That's a nice track. And Subway's Going Home. Yeah, they're keepers. And then the rest, you know, I don't want to skip through it, but... I'm also not finding myself wanting to go back to this album to listen to those tracks that I have as backgrounders. When it comes to The Wazard of Is, it's definitely the weakest track for me and I feel like I just, yeah, I wish it wasn't here. At the back end of the album, we do get some more keepers with Kaleidoscopic Lovers and Step Kids. And when we come to the final track, Saturday Night Inside Out, I adore this track. It's five minutes long, however, this could be half an hour long and I wouldn't complain. You could probably take out all of the background and skippers of this album and replace it with that half hour version and then this would probably be Final Worthy. <laughs> for their third album, it didn't take too long for it. We had to wait until 2020, so they're not rushing out with any new releases, but, you know, we're not waiting 16 years, are we? So to sum up, We Will Always Love You, it follows in the footsteps of Wildflower more than Since I Left You, and it is less playful, I would say. There are some moments I love, some tracks work cohesively well, and others that don't. 
despite not having any tracks that I'd obviously skip. Because of my lack of enthusiasm of a fair chunk of the album, it makes it a hard one for me to want to sit through all the way. And because of that, I overall don't consider this vinyl worthy for myself personally, unless it was to grow on me. With the opening sequence of this album, I'm not into it. I don't like that it's down tempo. I would prefer to have something warm, like Since I Left You or Because I'm Me. Something that's just big and, and inviting. But I don't get that on this. By track four, The Divine Chord, it is more like it in that sense where you know you could open up with that and then that would be the feeling that I would expect from an opening of the Avalanches. So once we get past the opening few tracks and then into the more middle area, there's a lot of keepers and let's go back to what I described earlier where it's just not as playful as what we would expect from the Avalanches, but I do still enjoy it. It should come as no surprise then that track 15 Music Makes Me High is a pillar for me as this style of playful and danceable bangers is what I like most about their music. I even rate Take Care In Your Dreaming as a pillar. And I have to admit, I'm not familiar with pretty much any of Denzel Curry or Tricky or Sample the Great. So they're definitely going to be people that I check out further as this is a brilliant track that I rate very highly, as you can see. Next track, Overcome. My only feedback on this is that I just wish that it was longer because I was really enjoying it. And at 3 minutes and 31, it felt too short. And then next up, we have another pillar. Gold Sky. And this time with Kurt Vile, I am quite familiar with his stuff. However, I do plan on going deeper into his discography in the future too. So all of that middle section was really strong for me. But then we do get into some more lull territory where we have always black and D, dial D for devotion. And then we get to running red lights, which is complicated for me because I feel like I like it, but at the same time, it's veering very close to being annoying. There's a quality to it where the repetitiveness of it can very quickly become something that I will resent in the future if I was to hear it too many times. I don't think I'll really encounter it all that much really as I don't think I've ever heard the avalanches being played anywhere before. I don't think I've ever met anyone who's even aware of who they are really but we'll see. Only time will tell. I really love the penultimate track as well with music is the light and i do wish again that this was longer and it could benefit from taking the runtime out of the beeps and boops out of weightless because <laughs> i'm not into that it could easily be cut entirely or just shortened and nothing would be missed that concludes this episode thank you for watching if you got this far remember to check out other vinyl worthy episodes if you like this i would taste might align more than you think or you may discover something new to love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Bye 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 bye.